Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. We use our e-ink devices and most importantly touch input devices uh, on a daily basis. And when you're using an e-reader of some sort, one of the main actions that you use daily is a swipe action. However, Many of us on different platforms have probably experienced a situation where the device is not responding in the way that you want or to be kind uh, is the device seems to be performing in a less than desired way. I don't know about you, but I find it somewhat frustrating when a device is behaving continuously in an unpredictable way, or shall I say more precisely, seemingly unpredictable way. There's a difference. And I've noticed that every so often, regardless of what the platform is for Remarkable, for Supernote, for books platforms, it doesn't matter, users do pop up when they say, uh, yeah, everything's great, but the swipe is terrible and I can't get it to work, or the swipe just doesn't work. Now, this is what I would like to address in this video so that I can offer you a little bit of uh, in-depth understanding and knowledge behind how does a swipe gesture actually work and then hopefully equipped with that knowledge you'll have a better understanding of how a swipe gesture works and you too will be able to swipe like a pro for example in the my daily organizer my daily organizer is a per calendar year organizer tool that i developed and that helps you organize your uh, monthly weekly quarterly yearly daily tasks. My Daily Organizer will help transform your Remarkable or your Books device or your Supernote into a full-blown digital organizer tool. And a little bit more. Be sure to check out the MDO guide video, the link is down in below, uh, to learn more about it and to see if it's something that might interest you. Now, back on to the gestures. Let's start swiping. All right, so in order for us to be able to swipe like a pro, um, it's a really good idea to understand how does a swipe gesture work and how it is actually implemented so that we can take that knowledge and use it to our advantage. Now, a vast majority of us, we don't think about our gestures. We just expect them to work and that's fine. It is the developer's responsibility to make sure and do their best that the majority of real world use case scenarios um, basically cover that expectation as best as they can. And there's different ways to actually approach these things, but uh, there's only a handful of things that determine what a swipe gesture is. Now, why is this knowledge important for you? Well, because if you know how it works, then you'll know what is wrong. Maybe you are doing something wrong or maybe the platform has a limitation, but either way, if you have that understanding, then you will at least know what's going on and know what you can do to adjust your uh, gesture or movement or whatever so that you can get the result that you are looking for. Now, when we swipe, we usually just swipe and we expect it to work. But I've chosen Books Note Air, my Note Air, um, specifically for one reason, because since update 3.1, they have changed the behavior of uh, swiping gesture in the Note app. And that one is very frustrating. And probably a lot of users have noticed that um, you've built up a habit of your swipe gesture and suddenly after an update this no longer works and then you will rightfully so you will say well what the hell this no longer works and if I do it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and sometimes I get this canvas with has been adjusted to maximum value, which is really frustrating. But as you can see, I can decide and use my gestures in a certain way to avoid and have 100% accuracy. So this is something that uh, has directly to do with swipe gesture mechanics. So let's look into what constitutes a swipe gesture. 
When we are swiping, for us, it's just a movement. For the device, it's a series of input information that the device has to record, interpret, and if certain set of conditions are satisfied, then it will execute gesture one, two, three, or whatever it may be. So the typical example is while we have a swipe gesture to flip pages, right? We also have a swipe gesture down up and a swipe to refresh or back in this case. So what constitutes a swiping gesture? It's mainly these five elements here. So we have gesture start position, direction, distance, gesture end position and time. Now let's talk a little bit about the start and end so that you can understand what does that mean. Whenever you touch the screen, the device actually receives certain input and that input is screen has been touched or the touch has been initiated at this position x, y of the screen. So we have two coordinates. Where did the touch occur? And that's not the only thing. Whenever you execute a touch to start and end, there's actually three phases of a touch gesture or a touch input. The very first moment a contact has been established with the screen, so that's your touch start. Then you have a touch stay type of uh, uh, input. That is as long as you have it touched. That's why we can drag things around. And then you have touch end, which is the very first moment when that touch is no longer true. So we are interested in our gesture to have start and end position. Usually that is how swipe gestures are implemented. So that means the very first time I touch and the very first moment when I lift my finger. Now, when we do a swipe gesture, uh, when it's a natural type of a gesture, we don't think about it in those terms. This is why it is a job of a developer to interpret a natural type of movement, something that we just swipe and then try to kind of uh, hone it all in so that the device is able to interpret a natural type of gesture and a variety of natural types of gestures into something that the user expects. In this case, a swipe gesture. So when we start our swipe, we have the initial start position. That's the moment we first touch the screen. Then we have the direction in which we are going, which is pretty much obvious. So we are once we've touched the screen, we're going to swipe to the left or to the right, depending on how we go, or we can also swipe vertically as I've shown. So you can swipe vertically and that's an entirely different gesture in an entirely different command. Now we also have a distance and the distance is uh, tightly connected between the start and end position. What does it actually do? Well, it actually is measured when you release your touch. Now, when we end our gesture, the system calculates and takes into consideration the direction and distance of the gesture. And that is basically comparing the start position. Where did we start our gesture? And where did we end? So if we end to the left of our starting position and we lift, we will go to the next page. If we go to the right and we lift, we will go to the back page, right? So start, move, and it swipes, start, move, distance and direction. Now, that distance and direction, it really depends how it's implemented. Sometimes it's calculated continuously. So as long as you are uh, uh, pressing your finger on the screen, then it's constantly co calculating between the start position. But more often than not, if you're doing it in an optimized way, you will calculate it on the end itself. You will just compare the positions and then you will interpret the gesture and send the gesture command further on to the system so that the system knows what to do. We also have one other component, which is time. And that time is also measured at the end position. So when we lift off our touch gesture, that's when the majority of stuff actually happens. And that's when the device is able to translate your input. What did you do? And then it issues a command to the device itself. So when I move my finger and lift it, the device, as soon as I lift it in that end moment, the device calculated the direction, the distance of the gesture and time it took to 
move and cover the distance from start to end because that can also um, be a determining factor if a gesture is successful or not. Now these rules, like these five rules, they are consistent on any device but how these rules are interpreted that is completely individual from device to device, from uh, platform to platform. And that is what actually determines a good uh, um, swiping mechanics or a good swiping feedback or a bad one. Now, in this case, I'm going to be talking about the bad way that it's been implemented because um, books, notes used to be very, very good. But since update 3.1, they've uh, changed, as I mentioned, they've changed the swipe gesture and they are no longer that good. They are quite frustrating. So I hope that's something that they uh, fix. So now that we are armed with this knowledge and we know what's going on, now we can troubleshoot and identify which aspect of the swipe gesture mechanics we don't like, or I don't like in this case, on the Books 3.1 update on the Notes uh, app. So what I expect from a device to do is to be able to just swipe like this. Why? Well, because if I am writing with a single hand, right, and then I should be able to just do this. As I am able to do on many other platforms, I should be able to swipe left or right, but I can't. In fact, there is absolutely zero response to this. Uh, maybe I will get the information about Canvas with has range, chain, reached maximum range, blah, blah. Now, what is going on? Well, we have our gesture here, start and end. We have time as well, so time is okay. But, and we have the direction, right? But the distance has been calibrated in such a way that if it's shorter than a certain amount, and we can determine what that amount is. So let's just put a starting point here and we will put an end point here. So this is going to be our start. This is going to be our end and you can swipe them depending on what you want. Now I'm going to try and determine the distance where the gesture is ignored for how long. Okay. So we're getting there. That is okay. So now let's try and get it. So I think there. So it's around here. So this whole area is ignored. So the entire distance here, as long as your gesture is within this area here, the distance of the gesture, you will have no input. That sucks <laughs> because this is precisely where the majority of our gestures are. We are not going to flip a whole freaking page in order to do that. No, we're not. We're going to be doing this one finger gestures. And if you actually notice, this is exactly this ignored phase or the distance is precisely where your natural real world type of uh, gestures should occur. All right. So now let's move our gesture a little bit further. Then I have canvas width has reached maximum value. Now that command is going to be from this distance, we are going to have the canvas width command. And now let's actually test out and see how big of a distance does it need to be to actually cross over into a page turn command. We have ignored, then we have our canvas width, and now we have to see where is the page swipe? Okay, so the canvas width is very, very short, it looks like. And now we have to try and find it. So still there. So let's try and uh, move it up to here. That is still there. Let's move it there. We're still at canvas. There we go, we swiped. So let's try and fine tune it a little bit. Still canvas. Still canvas, still canvas, and a page swipe. All right, so let's say roughly around here. Let's try that. So this distance here is our 
canvas with command. And everything from this point onwards is finally the page swipe. So now that we've actually uh, kind of defined the ranges of the swipe, you can see how that distance aspect is important. Even though we are using the same amount of time and same gesture uh, and same direction, that distance in this specific case has been decided that it's going to be multifunctional. And for whatever reason, I really don't understand the reason, the key distance range, the threshold where we actually use our gestures mostly for swiping has been chosen to be completely ignored. And this here, this area here, that is the biggest problem that I have with the new update. That it simply is ignoring the touch in this range. But now that we understand this, let's see if we can have predictable behavior. So here I expect absolutely nothing to happen no matter how much I swipe. And I am getting predictable behavior. Now, if I go here, I should get canvas width, and I do. Again, again, and again. But now I should also have a consistent page swipe information, which is swipe page, swipe page, swipe page. Would you look at that? And now I have pretty much 100% consistency of my page swipe gesture. Now that doesn't make this gesture better. It's still flawed. It still has a big problem. And I still think it's a very, very uh, wrong decision to actually decide that your entire, that your swipe command is to swipe over the entire page. It might make sense in uh, lab-like type of results, as in somebody is testing this and it's like, okay, so when you do this, then it works well, that it actually functions. But that's not how you're supposed to test and uh, troubleshoot human input uh, systems, which this is. So a human input uh, system needs to be able to kind of respond in a predictable manner when humans use it. But that's not what we actually get. One other thing that I also wanted to mention in this case was uh, you often, um, some of the viewers, you've probably noticed when I said that I have dry fingers and calluses because I play bass and guitar, and then you have layers of dead skin, and that, uh, that's why touch devices don't like me. Well, now we can actually touch upon that as well. Why? Well, when you have uh, dry fingers or dead skin, it doesn't register as good as a soft tissue skin on a touch input uh, yeah, layer. Now, what happens then is that if it doesn't conduct that well, or if it doesn't register that well, once you start your gesture, the connection can be lost. So you can actually inadvertently send the end command of a gesture to the device before any of this direction, distance and time uh, conditions have been fulfilled. So basically, you have like a loose cable that's kind of sketchy and the input that you're sending to the device is not as good if as if it was used with a soft finger or a or soft skin, so to speak. So that's basically that part covered. The, uh, look at it as like a connection thing. So the hard skin um, is not a good connector as a soft skin is. All right, so now let's take a look how does a gesture work on a different platform. And when we test out the Remarkable, you will actually notice that the gesture behaves quite differently. So the distance that we need to actually cover is far shorter. And this is what makes the gesture a lot better on the Remarkable because you can easily do it with your thumb. It is within that range, the distance that needs to be covered for a swipe gesture is much shorter. Now, here with the Remarkable, we also have another thing that we can test out and uh, hopefully show, which is the time component. When I talked about the gestures that we have also the time component. And that means that if I move my gesture at a certain speed, so it took, let's say, half a second to cover the 
the distance that I had. It doesn't matter what the distance is. It can be also the full screen. As long as it's done within that time frame, a gesture is detected. However, let's now try and do it for one second. And still is detected. Let's move it past one second. That my gesture lasts more than one second. Still detected. Still detected. Still detected. Still detected. There we go. So it's been calibrated probably around two seconds that if your gesture is taking longer than two seconds, then it's a very, very high likelihood that what you're doing, what you're inputting into the device is not an intentional swipe. So that's time aspect is also an important one so that the device can try to understand, did you want to make a gesture or not? So that's just something that I wanted to kind of show and also the all important distance that that threshold that's unfortunately ignored on the uh, books platform since the update 3.1. That is precisely the threshold where we are when we are swiping with our um, thumbs, which makes yeah the update very, very uncomfortable to use. Now let's check out the super note. And on a super note as well, you will have a very similar type of behavior, but we have another component that hasn't been mentioned here because it's not part of a gesture mechanic, but it's something that we definitely have to keep in mind. And that is device responsiveness. So one could actually interpret the super note is a really good example because it really does take quite a lot longer time than the other ones. Again, it's not super long, but it is definitely longer uh, uh, time that it takes to interpret the input and then execute a command. So that is gesture responsiveness. So I have performed my gesture. The gesture is successful. The gesture is successfully interpreted by, by the device, but we have this kind of time gap after we lift our finger off, after our gesture is finished, and when the device actually executes a command. So let's see here. This is on the Remarkable. And as soon as I lift, we have a reaction, right? Now, on the Super Note, I do the same thing, and it does register, but we have quite a bit of time here where nothing is happening. And we don't know if we had a fail uh, gesture or is the device simply calculating stuff. So that's one of the things that I wanted to kind of show that we have this extra element as well. And on all three of the systems, you have different kind of performance. So on the books device, you have the a very, very instantaneous type of reaction, like on the uh, Remarkable, but we have this kind of problematic thing of uh, not registered at all. On the Super Note, we have very, very reliable, uh, actually, uh, detection of gestures, but we have a very long processing time since the gesture has ended until the execution of command, which can be misinterpreted as a failed gesture or anything like that. Either way, the end result is that the user impression can be that the device is sluggish or not as responsive. So the best example for me here is after the updates that they've added, the uh, Remarkable 2 became more and more responsive. And really, it is the most responsive one as far as the gestures go, as long as you know what you are doing. Now, this wasn't the case all the time. They have been refining the gestures over the updates. But as as it is now, I still have 2.6. I didn't receive 2.7 yet. Um, the gestures are very reliable if you kind of thoughtfully uh, do a gesture and uh, very flexible because it allows for different distance. It allows even for a little bit of a deviation. You don't have to be perfectly horizontal. You can go a little bit diagonal down, a little bit diagonal up. It will still kind of uh, detect that. And the reason why that diagonal is important is because you can actually do this. 
it's still mainly horizontal. So you're moving more horizontal than vertical. And then the device says, yeah, yeah, you're going sideways. That's what you want it to do. But uh, most importantly is the device responsiveness. So as soon as my gesture is finished, the device reacts. And that is a very, very important component as well. And that's something that I just wanted to kind of show how uh, the difference is between these guys. So hopefully now you have a better grasp over uh, how the gestures work and it hopefully will help you get more predictable results out of your device that you might be using. Now, um, that being said, I am of a very firm belief as a developer that gesture design absolutely has to uh, follow a real world use case scenario, which means you as a developer have to determine how will your users use your device because swiping is one of the main things that you're going to be using on these types of devices and it's a very very important one to uh, get right and we have out of these three uh, uh, devices we have as far as i'm concerned remarkable after 2.6 update really really is very very responsive and very very accurate with the swiping uh, gestures i haven't gotten 2.7 update yet so i don't know if it's been improved messed up or not i don't know i just know how it is on 2.6 now uh so for me the gesture uh, operation works the best because as you can as you saw i could actually swipe just with my thumbs and yeah it just works super note also works so the gesture detection system is really really good and very reliable but on the super note we have that other aspect that's a little bit more uh yeah worse than on remarkable which is the device responsiveness so while the gesture is registered and is designed well the responsiveness of the device to that gesture is a little bit too slow and that leaves the user wondering did the gesture actually register or not what happened or not because we have just a little bit too much time there to introduce that seed of doubt uh did it register a gesture or not? And that can actually result in double gestures and more device unresponsiveness and things like that. And finally, we have the books devices, in my case, the Books Note Air, which I use on a daily basis, but I do really want to stress out that since the update of 3.1, they've significantly worsened the gesture functionality, especially in the notebooks themselves. It, uh, as demonstrated in this video, you could clearly see uh, that the primary section of your gesture detection is actually disabled. So the main area where your gesture detection should be doesn't react at all. Then you have a very, very large portion of the canvas scaling. And then finally, like after you swipe the, like over half a screen, then you get the, de the gesture detection of a swipe um, action. So for me, that's really doesn't work. But uh, once you do know what's wrong with it and what's pissing you off and why it's not working, that understanding helps so that you can get predictable results. So that even with the shortcomings that currently we have on the books platform with the update 3.1 and the swiping stuff that I talked about, you know now how to get predictable results and that if you want to swipe a page that you need to go over half a width of page and then you will get predictable and good results. Does that solve the problem? No, but it helps manage uh, and use your device until that gets fixed or improved in hopefully one of the coming updates as far as the books platform goes. I hope that you found the video useful and I just also want to say a super big thank you because my deep guide has now after a little bit over a year of being launched has now surpassed 20,000 subscribers. So thank you, that's absolutely amazing. And it makes me very, very happy to see that the content that I'm making and the content that I'm interested in, because that's usually mainly what I do, is something that resonates with so many of you and so many of you expressing such wonderful kindness that, uh, yeah, sometimes it's uh, it definitely makes my day. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now onwards to 50K.
All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and check out the My Daily Organizer video, installation guides and all that kind of stuff to see if that's a thing that might actually interest you and might benefit your workflow. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.